Alright guys, today we're going to be looking at the DX8 and the first thing I just wanted to show was the transmitter itself and the case I got over here. Uh, this case is a Spectrum case. It can be found on the Horizon Hobby website just like the DX8. And I ended up going with the uh, the two transmitter case and I would recommend this over the one transmitter case even if you only have one transmitter because I like to use you know the one side for a transmitter but then the other side you know I can put batteries in when I'm going to the field or I can you know store some other items in there so even if you only got one transmitter the, the two uh, two size case is nice because you got a little bit of extra storage space let's go ahead and look at the DX8 now let me get zoomed in here so we can see it I'm going to show you guys some of the features it has and kind of how it works so we want to see that bottom screen mainly so the DX8 here uh, I just love it for the reason that it's very simple. Uh, many people like the DX6i over the DX7 because they say the DX6i has easier menus and it's easier to use. Well the DX8 even though it's more advanced and it has more options it's one of the simplest transmitters I've ever used. Setting up anything on this is very simple as long as you have a basic background and you know what you're trying to set. First thing we're going to do uh, unlike the DX6 where you can get into the model menu uh, when the transmitter is on, with the DX8 to get into the model menu, you're going to want to start it while holding down uh, this scroller button. Turn on your transmitter and this will bring us to the system setup menu. And you can go to the main screen, but you can also select your model. As you can see here I got tons of models. You can select your model type, planar helicopter, your model name, and it has a pretty good amount of space for a model name. This one's pretty short, but haven't had any problems fitting any model name in there. Wing type. There's lots of wing types. This one's set to normal, so I'll go back to that, but there's dual aileron, flap aileron, one aileron, one flap, one aileron, two flaps, two ailerons, one flap, two aileron, two flap, elevon, and then there's the tail, normal, v-tail, dual elevator, dual rudder, dual rudder elevator, so this helps you get everything set up real simple. You don't have to do mixing and stuff on your own. This will kind of do all the setup for you for these types of uh, wing and tail types. Switch select uh, helps you set up some of your switches. Trim setup, model reset, model copy, warnings, uh, throttle over time. I'm not really sure what the warnings is, but I guess you can set up stuff in there. The telemetry very cool feature with the DX8. I have not used this feature yet so I'll have to get some more information on it once I do use it but the new uh, telemetry feature uh, with the new receivers that they have will give you lots of information uh, during flight so that's a cool new feature that we'll get into more later. This is more of an overview video. Your frame rate, your trainer uh, settings, your system settings and you can transfer to SD cards. So you can transfer your model to your SD card which they do include one and uh, they include a I think I could take this out when it's on. They include 128 megabyte, which that's a small SD card, of course. I mean, we're all used to like gigabyte SD cards now. But this is only storing written data. It's just storing your settings. So this can hold tons of uh, tons of planes and helicopters. So you can have 30 planes and helicopters saved on your helicopter. As you can see, there's 30 models. But you can also have pretty much an unlimited amount stored on an SD card or on your computer. And, and you can swap them in and out at any time. So this new DX8 allows you to have an infinite amount of models, but only 30 can be flown instantly. You know, you'd have to swap them in and out. But if they're on the SD card, it's pretty much an instant swap anyways. So that's one really cool feature. That's why I really like this. This should last me a while because I do have lots of planes and helicopters. And having the DX7 or DX6, 6i, I would always have to rebind even though they had 10 or 20 model memory. So this is cool. Alright, so we went through the main system startup menu. That's basically your when you're uh, binding a new plane and you're setting up how it's going to work. That's your system setup menu. Now we go to the main screen. And on the main screen here, it'll show your plane because that's what this is. It's a foresight. Your timer's here, your battery's here. And don't worry about your battery not filling up to full. I usually get about 5.5 volts maximum when I charge overnight and this little bar will not go all the way up to the very full of the fullest uh, it can be. That's okay, that's how it just is. Uh, whenever you get under 
I, I usually go under 4.7 volts. That's when I'll charge again. I don't think the warning actually goes off. The, the warning buzzer actually goes off to like 4.4 volts. Now this comes with a 2,000 milliamp nickel metal hydrate battery. There's an upgraded 4,000 milliamp two cell lipo you can put in here, which will give it way more flight time. But on the stock battery, I fly a lot of flights, and I get a few days of you know 20, 30 flights in, no problem. So it, it lasts plenty long. But the lipo would be nice, and I plan to get that soon. I'll, I'll give you guys a little review on that when I get it. Uh, so that's the battery. Uh, in the main screen here, to get in the main screen, you just press down, and you get in the main menu. And then you got your servo set up in here. You got your travel, your sub trim, your reverse, your speed. And that's for your throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, gear, aux 1, aux 2, aux 3. So you got all your servo settings in there. Next we got dual rate and expo. You can set them up on a switch or you can set them up to always be on if you just want to set up one, one expo setting and you don't want to have to switch it. Or you can set it up to a switch. And real easy to set up. Start with aileron, there's your elevator, rudder. It's real easy to set up, all pretty simple. Differential, throttle cut, throttle curve. Throttle curve more is used for uh, helicopters, same with pitch curve. Flap system, uh, I don't have flaps on this foresight, it's only got one aileron servo so that's not set up, but in your flap system it's real easy. I set up flaps on my uh, Mini Fontana which I'll show you guys when I do my maiden flight of it. I'll show you how it works in here. So easy to set up flaps, uh, flapper on and flaps uh, with this uh, flap menu. So I'll show that more when I'm showing my Mini Fontana. Uh, mixing, you know, just like the DX6 and 7, we got mixing and it's real easy to set up. You know, you set up which uh, control mixes to the other and how much it's going to percentage wise mix either right or left. Real simple to set up and you can set them up on a switch. Range test, of course, your timer. Again, real easy to set up everything. It's nice and backlit screen, makes it easy to see also. And then your monitor. So as you can see, there's not like too many things to go through because it's real simple display, simple setup, but there's everything in there. And if you were in the helicopter menu, there would be a little more. This is a plane. If we went into a helicopter one, let me go to a helicopter. Model select, and we'll pick the 250 main screen. If you go to a helicopter, there'll be a little bit more like the swash plate. You could set up uh, your movement of your aileron, elevator, and pitch. You could set up your expo. Set up your gyro, your your rate, uh, governor, pitch curve, tail curve. You know, so it's got a little bit more, of course, when you got the helicopter. A little bit different settings. Has everything though really nice. You've got all the switches you could want on top. You got three uh, F modes, so you can have you know. Most of the switches have three positions, which is more than mo most transmitters. Uh, lower transmitters have uh, two switch positions. So with all these switches having almost three, that gives you more settings. You can uh, gives you more choices you can set. So you can have three different choices rather than two. So that's that's nice about it as well. So just an overview of the DX8 here, guys. Uh, I'll show you more settings in future videos as I'm using them. Like I said with the Mini Fontana. I'll show the flap around settings and stuff like that. So uh, that's it for now, and happy flying. See you guys later.